What's going on everybody? I'm here to do a review for the movie Lanier. Now here's the interesting thing about this. I didn't even know that this was a movie. And I actually found out about this when I saw a clip of it on an Instagram page. And I was sitting here saying to myself, when did they turn this into a movie? Because I definitely talked about this in my Black Massacre series. This was one of the locations, Oscarville, that I talked about in my Black Massacre series. And it turns out this movie was posted up on the Amazon Prime video site or page literally around the same time that my Black Massacre series was about to come to an end. I believe it was posted on July 16th, 2023. And my series ended maybe like the week later. By that time, I had already talked about Oscarville and Lake Lanier. And I'm sitting here saying to myself, if they ever, and I think I said that if they ever did a movie, no matter how big or small, that it would have to be in a horror type of way. And it's like, were they reading my thoughts? Because that's pretty much how this movie played itself out to be, was on a horror side. Now, I'm glad they actually went the independent route with this because I truly believe with the story behind this, no big studio would touch it. And if they did, it would not be told in the way, in the vein that it should have been told. So basically, the movie Lanier is about this family, this white family that goes on this vacation. They basically signed up to get something called the Lanier Experience, where they go there and they basically go and look at the lake. They go visit it. And it's basically something that you have to sign up for and then you have to qualify for it and you get selected and you're able to go and basically take a tour of the lake and everything around the particular lake. And then they come across this black family who are the ones that pretty much orchestrated the trip. By this point, I think I'm already gathering where the story is headed, but I'm not entirely sure, so I just continue to look on. And then it turns out that the man, like the, the main character, the black guy who helped put this trip together along with his wife, is also a cop and he's investigating a missing person someone went was at the lake and they went missing much like how it plays out in real life where people go to this lake and they actually go missing or something tragic happens to them or they end up you know finding them and they're ending up being deceased so basically they basically come together to or orchestrate this trip for this family and some other families to come and visit the lake and basically get a tour of the lake and it turns out that the man who's orchestrating this along with his wife he's actually a descendant of one of the people that actually died in the oscarville massacre if y'all remember when i talked about that in my black massacre series you pretty much get the gist of it what i liked about this is that it gives a history lesson there so when i was watching it and they were saying certain things and putting certain parts out there because there was one part in the movie where they were giving like a history lesson type of deal i'm saying and saying to myself yep I remember that being mentioned when I talked about Oscarville when I was doing my Black Massacre series last year. And it's just crazy how everything just kind of came together. I just wish I had knew about this movie last year. That way I could have talked about it when it came out. But you know what? It's better late than never. I guess the universe was telling me something that is Black History Month. So it kind of just fell into my lap, ironically, in February. So, hey, it is what it is. You know, better late than never. What I liked about the movie, again, goes back to what I initially said, is that it's made on an independent level. I've always said that if a movie like this is to tell our story, even if so briefly, that it would have to be independently made because no major studio is going to really mess with it like that. That's why we give kudos to Nate Parker when he did Birth of a Nation when it came to talking about the story of Nat Turner. While the movie did get wide distribution, not as wide as it should have been, and we all know why, but it did get picked up by Fox Searchlight to distribute it, it was independently made because no big studio was going to touch it, nor did we expect them to touch it because it wasn't your typical slave narrative. It was about a slave rebellion where the slaves fought back. Hence why I'm doing my We Fought Back series right now. Of course, you all know, Nat Turner and his rebellion is definitely going to be one of the episodes, but we had a while before we even get to that particular moment in history. So another thing that I liked is that they went the horror route, like they went a horror element with this. And honestly, I truly believe this was the only way that they would have been able to go with this particular story because it's not a comedy for sure. It doesn't really have room to be too much of a drama aspect to it. To me, something like this could only be horror. Because think about it. 
the people who suffered and died from that back in the day that was a horror incident for them so let's make it a horror type of film and it actually worked pretty perfectly it was actually one scene in here it didn't it wasn't a horror part but it was a scene where the grandson who was the descendant was having a conversation with his granddad who came out of the water because he was one of the ones who died in the in the lake what well, would we'll, we'll become uh the lake the linear linear and i kid you not in that one scene right there a chill literally went down my spine as i was watching that and i just like whoa like i, I like it's just like something just like like came over me when i was watching them have this dialogue and the thing is like i said it had no it was no scary part of anything like that it wasn't a jump scare or anything like that it just literally a chill literally went down my spine watching the dialogue that the granddad was having with his grandson he's basically telling him like look you need to lure these people here because it's like a revenge plot they have to lure these people here who just happen to be white and bring all of them here so we can deal with them because they feel like this is their revenge my first initial thought was i wonder if the plot twist to this is are the people that they're bringing here do they happen to be the descendants of the white people who were responsible for massacring the black people of oscarville but i don't really i'm not going to actually you know, like go into it i'm gonna let y'all go ahead and watch for yourself to see if my theory was actually correct because that was that was my initial thought if that was actually you know the case but i'm not going to spoil it too much for y'all because i want y'all to check this particular uh film out like i said if you like a horror type of feel then this definitely is the movie for you i will say though if i had one critique of the movie i would say that the ending was a little bit shaky it kind of did something a little predictable and a little bit kind of like they could have went with this ending a whole different type of way especially when you had all of that build up and lead up to what ended up happening towards the end and it's like this is the ending that we kind of got but i understand it was an independent film so you know you never know what the writing process is or the timing process is for a film like this because when you're independent film you are on have limited resources so you have to pretty much do what it is that you feel you have to do in order to complete your project ahead of schedule or by the time of the deadline also another thing that i liked about the movie the movie is only like an hour and 10 minutes long so it's not a long movie so it's not like it's long and drawn out like and i like that because then you can get straight to the point you don't have to drag anything out you can get hit all the major points without having to feel like it's just dragging along and it's like okay when are we going to get to the part that you know we really came here to see and it's easy it's a pretty simple story to follow is not hard to follow along is a very easy watch to you know be able to gather or try to figure out what's going to happen and even if you don't it's something that you can still watch and be like okay this is very good i can see exactly where they're headed with this again this is also again on amazon prime i rented it for 5.99 which means basically for those of you who don't know how that works on amazon prime if you rent a movie off of there then it's available to you for 30 days if you don't watch it so say that for me i rented it today on february 5th 2024 if i wasn't to pl press play on it then my rental would end on march 5th but because i pressed play on it and started watching it i would have 48 hours to watch it which means it would cancel itself out by the 7th around the time that i press play 48 hours so that gives you enough time to actually watch it. I would highly suggest that people do indeed watch it because there are going to be some stuff, especially I will say while the ending, the very ending fell flat, the part before it is definitely something that just oozes FBA energy with the dialogue of the grandson who was the descendant and the dialogue he has with the this white guy, the dad, but uh, who he lures out there and basically i don't want to spoil it like i'm saying like the dialogue that he has with him like i said just oozes fba energy and also too how they even had the white people that was in it in the way they were portrayed 
reminds me so much of how we as black people, specifically black Americans, hear a lot of white people dismiss our history. Like say, oh, that's not true. This is false. You're making stuff up. You're crazy. So how kudos to the director and the writers for basically taking what we would hear in real life and actually thrust them into this movie. It was even one female character. She was a minor character. Uh, white character when I looked at her and heard her talk I swear it was like if you closed your eyes it was like listening to Marjorie Taylor Greene she kind of looked like her she even sounded like her it was eerie how <laughs> how spot on she kind of was like her but if you watch the movie you'll see exactly who it is that I'm talking about so I like that they actually was able to pull and actually make some realism there with the dialogue so that just goes back to whoever wrote the script because it was like again listening to how a lot of people who are have anti-black sentiments towards black people how they dismiss our history and how they pretty much dismiss us and then remember also around the time this movie came out there was still people going missing or, or dying at this lake and we were just sitting here saying to myself saying to ourselves why do people keep going out there remind you when I was getting ready to near the end of my Black Massacre series, I maybe did about two or three videos after that, soon after that, maybe in August, around that time, where it was people still dying at that lake. And of course, the people who were the casualties happened to be PC. So it lines itself really up perfectly with the timing of them releasing this movie again with me coming near the end of my series and then also those other deaths that happen and then they put some little you know uh i guess you could say facts about the lake and the people going missing towards the end that i thought was very appropriate for them to put there as well because it just lets you know that yes that lake is indeed most likely very haunted but a lot of people kind of dismiss it and the people keep going there they can go there if they want to you won't catch me going there i'm just saying and also too shout out to donald glover because if you watch the show atlanta specifically the third season he highlighted lake lanier in the first episode of the third season and i believe he highlighted it again later on in the season something that you know he bought something a story like that to a more bigger platform because of course it was on fx and more people was able to see it or get exposed to what lake lanier was of course by that time i already knew what lake lanier was but that's pretty much my take on the movie lanier y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments again please if you if you want to do so it's on amazon all you got to do is go on amazon prime video type in lanier came out last year 5.99 to rent it won't kill you 599 won't kill you and you can go ahead and watch it and let me know what you think about it down below be safe and be one